Hi, I'm Allison Bucholtz Al, and I'm a program manager on the Visual Studio platform team. Today, we're going to take a brief tour of what's new in Visual Studio 2019. We're going to look at our enhanced start window, the UI refresh we've made, search improvements in the IDE, document health and one click code cleanup, and finally, debugger search and stepping improvements. Let's go ahead and dive in to our start window and our UI refresh. With the enhanced start window, you can quickly clone or check out code from Azure DevOps, GitHub, or elsewhere. You can get started on one of your existing projects with open a project solution or folder buttons, which will open the file explorer, or you can pick up with a recent project or folder. You can also create a new project and check out our new project dialog experience, which allows you to search and filter your project templates so you can quickly get to what you're looking for. If you'd like to just open the IDE without any code open, go ahead and click Continue Without Code here at the bottom. Now let's switch over to an instance of Visual Studio that's already running. Here you can see it looks quite different from Visual Studio 2017. We've reduced clutter by minimizing the Chrome and compressing the menu bar up here to allow more space for what matters, such as your editor window. You'll also notice that the theme looks different as we've updated our classic blue theme. As you just saw, our enhanced start window allows you to quickly check out a repo, open an existing project solution or folder, or get started with a brand new project. With our UI refresh, we've added more space for the things that matter, a modern UX, and updated theming so that you can quickly tell the difference between Visual Studio 2017 and 2019 when you have them installed side by side. Let's dive into the search improvements in the IDE. You'll notice I can hit this search bar up here by clicking on it or using Control Q as a shortcut. As I type, you'll notice I get results almost instantly. And even though I've managed to misspell something, I'm still getting relevant search results. If we take a closer look at any of these search results, you'll also notice that we have the shortcuts here quickly so that you don't have to look through your menu commands in order to find those shortcuts. And finally, if you're not seeing what you're looking for, you can always quickly do an online search with this button down here. For a quick recap, you'll see that with our search, you can now activate it quickly with Control Q. We've got Fuzzy Search to help with any misspellings as well as fast results. You can also look at shortcuts or search the web if you don't find what you wanted. Let's take a look now at Document Health and Code Cleanup. So, down here in the scroll bar, you'll see that we have this warning indicator. This is our document health. This tells us if there are any errors, warnings, or suggestions in our current open document. Right now, if I hover over it, it's letting me know I have 29 warnings and 18 suggestions, which is why it's this yellow yield sign. If there were errors, it would be a red sign, and if there are only suggestions, it'll be a blue. This may change as we're continuing to iterate on the design for this feature. If I right click, you'll see that I can actually navigate to the next issue in the file or the previous. I can also do this with clicking on it or shift click to go back. Now, if I go ahead and right click again, you'll see that I have the option to run code cleanup or configure code cleanup. With configure code cleanup, I can actually look through and understand which rules I'd like to apply. This is similar to format document, except that instead of just taking care of your brace styling or uh, margins or spacing, we can actually apply different refactorings and code cleanup fixes. You'll see that I have this apply implicit explicit type preferences set here. So I'll click OK. Now, if I want to run code cleanup and get rid of all these warnings here in my error list, I can do that by hitting this command or with the shortcut Control E, Control C. So if I run code cleanup, it will ask me to verify which rules I'd like to run. Now, since I've already had apply implicit explicit type preferences checked, I'm going to hit OK. And you'll notice that all of these change to var, just as we'd like them to. And our error list is clean, and we've got a clean bill of health from our document health indicator. With your document health indicator, you'll be able to understand whether there are errors, warnings, or suggestions in your open file. You can also run and configure code cleanup directly from this icon. 
For code cleanup, you can configure which rules to apply in the configure code cleanup command and change the direction of each rule in tools, options, text editor, code style. Finally, let's look at our debugger improvements. First, you can expect step improvements by up to 50%, depending on the size and complexity of your project. But hopefully for those of you who spend a lot of time stepping through, you'll notice a significant improvement in the performance. Next, let me draw your attention to this window over here in the autos, locals, and watch window. All three of these now have a search bar, which allows you to search through the items here instead of scrolling through, which is especially useful if you have many, many items in here. So for example, I can search string just like that. And you'll notice that it takes me to the first time string is encountered. In this case, it happens to be a type, but if string were in value or name, it would also return search results for that. I can go to my next instance here, or if I want to dig deeper and expand any of these elements and search there, I can also search deeper. Right now, our default search depth is three, so that means it will open items three times and expand three times inward before it ends its search. But you can change this to whatever you'd like. You can also limit this search by searching only currently expanded items. So if you have many, many items or you're trying to scope the search just to one particular object, you can set that. We hope that you'll try out all of these features and even more by downloading the Visual Studio 2019 preview. You can do this at aka.ms slash vs dash preview. If you want to know the full range of things we're introducing into each preview release, you can also check out our release notes at aka.ms slash vs slash preview dash more dash info. And finally, be sure to check out all the other videos here for Connect at aka.ms slash connect 2018.